Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Renegades React, and we are back. And we are going to be checking out uh, Cinema Sins, Everything Wrong with the Avengers in three minutes or less. So probably going to step on some toes here because mm -hmm. the Avengers is kind of a popular movie. You know, Kind of. Um, it was the third highest grossing film of all time. And now it's, I think it's uh, ever since uh, both Jurassic World and... Uh, and uh, Star Wars came out yeah. last year. It, God, think about that. It's already it's already 2016 yeah, now. It, yeah. It, oh, man. We're old. Yeah. <laughs> Time <laughs> flies when you're having fun. Uh, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and give this a watch. Um, should be pretty good because, you know, I think uh, Cinema Sins like to, likes to step on people's toes. But also, um, it's obvious that the people that do this really love movies. Of know? course. So. All right. Here we go. This is a Tesseract, and that's pretty much all you'll ever know for sure about it. Secret military research facility on brightly lit exposed Mesa. Helicopters <laughs> do not need to follow roadways. Coulson wears sunglasses at night. Nick Fury's character development literally begins and ends with eye patch. Exciting superhero movie starts with plotting exposition. Possibly racist movie kills two Asian extras in a row. Tesseract powers allow for mind control by tapping the center of the chest. Dangerous energy source, space doorway with gamma radiation? Screw it, transport by hand. Yep. The bulletproof vest fake out. First action piece of major superhero film is a boring car chase. This scene does not contain a lap dance. <laughs> Bruce Banner is hiding out where only little girls and S.H.I.E.L.D. can find him. S.H.I.E.L.D. answers to four people on vertical plasma screens. One Bad guy henchmen run and laps. Loki's scepter is also a space phone. The helicarrier is hella stupid. Cloaking device is dumb, but I also don't know why they're hiding. Cap pays off a bet he never technically accepted. We're sweeping every wirelessly accessible camera on the planet. Camera on the planet. Loki makes grand appearance changes that barely changes appearance. Attacks Germans, but lectures them in English. <laughs> Did he just jump from a plane? You know, the Nazis had pieces of flair that they made the Jews wear. Late night kidnap, brotherly argument on a mountain. Superhero pissing contest. Supervillain prisoner left unattended. Superhero <laughs> pissing contest number two. Cap and Iron Man almost kiss. Mighty helicarrier basically That's neutered by work. one freaking arrow. Clearly no radio in his ear, but he pretends to have one. Computer virus delivered by arrow. For a super soldier, Captain America is a terrible shot. Loki tricks Thor with the old Lucy Charlie Brown football prank. So Loki's plan was to get <laughs> captured on purpose and then have yeah. Hawkeye break him out. But no real objective? Long, boring fight scene between characters we are already trying not to hate. Tesseract mind control powers erased with a simple blow to the head. Fury gives intimidating death stare to a computer screen. Dying person can't finish their last profound statement before dying cliche. Bad news negates the need for medical care. Nick Fury motivates the team by lying about the location of baseball cards. Cap gets AIDS from handling bloody baseball cards. Aww. Basically indestructible heroes still need Little League pep talk to get up for the big challenge. Thor has trouble picking up his hammer, but it's never explained. Every gadget in this movie has to glow with a blue light. Loki patiently waits for Iron Man to remove the damaged suit, grab a drink, banter a bit, and then put on a new suit instead of just killing him. Too bad Loki's mind control powers window. only work if the scepter touches the exact center of a person's chest. Generic bad guy soldiers whose abilities and shortcomings are never explained. Why are they even trying to stop an army that we never once see kill or injure a human being? Captain America's really more of a super gymnast than a superhero. Black Widow knows exactly how to handle and fire an alien weapon seconds after picking it up. And suddenly, there was Bruce Banner on a motorcycle. Production Design 101, don't imitate anything from Transformers. Hulk can suddenly control his powers because the story demands it. Thor's lightning turns out to be really, really effective against the aliens, but he only uses it once. The Council would rather definitely kill everyone in New York with a nuclear weapon than maybe have some die in an alien invasion. Loki gets caught monologuing. Nick Fury fires a missile at an American to stop him from firing a missile at Americans. All the enemy soldiers die like once the mothership is exploded. There is no gravity in space, but Iron Man falls back to Earth anyway. Are Banner and Stark dating now? Credit scene to tease the next movie turns out to be homework assignment. Yeah. Shawarma scene missed by any moviegoer who didn't realize there would be two end credit scenes. So basically, nope. everyone. I caught it. I did too. Yeah, I mean, I can't kind of get behind that. The Chitauri were a little... I don't know. I feel like they were a little underdeveloped. I mean, because... I mean, unless you were, like, a diehard Marvel fan and not, like... You know, yeah, the, uh, well, the I mean, Chitauri... The Chitauri weren't really... Yeah, their their character development began and ended with with random aliens screaming. Mm -hmm. That's... Because that's how that one entered. You know, it's like... You know, when they take off, that one takes off its mask, and it's like, ah! Yeah. And, you know, it pretty much ends with uh, them all just falling over like dominoes whenever yeah. their ship is just, just... I mean, that's the thing, though. I love the event, like, 
this this one, and then of course, Age of Ultron. Um, I love them, but I don't have the same expectations because it's like it's just a big party. Like, I mean, you've got all all these characters. They they take them out of their own plot lines from their movie story arcs, and then put them in this movie. That's just, I mean, you know, it's literally just like you know when Cap tells Hulk to smash. Yeah, I mean, well, it's I, just well, I get that, and it's it's a superhero team up. Yeah, and. And I, that's all you really need to know. I mean, it's yeah, just like, it, it's a, it's good, dumb fun, but yeah. at the same time, uh, in this one, I still think that they managed a, a decent enough story mm-hmm. out of it to where to where people were still more invested. Whereas with Age of Ultron, I felt I felt we'd seen we had seen a we didn't see anything that we hadn't seen before. Mm-hmm. It was pretty much the same stuff again, and there were stuff there was stuff in it that was kind of forced like for instance the Bruce Banner and Black and uh Black Widow all of a sudden they're a thing. Yeah, that kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, um, it was just like it would make more sense for her to remain a rogue and potentially be pursued like like it like the guys like the guys each of them try to be a suitor for her mm-hmm. and she and she like randomly chooses uh she randomly chooses a guy that she met somewhere else that isn't involved. That'd be that at least would be a little bit funny, but mm-hmm. I mean, and maybe she doesn't have to wind up with anything, anyone at all because hey, she maybe a, a female, an independent female who feels like she doesn't need that, right? And that's well, think, and that's all well and good. Well, uh, at one point in the comics, didn't Captain America and Black Widow have a kid? They that's actually I think in one of the alternate Earth uh, timelines, okay. uh, but there but. At another one, heck, Storm and Wolverine wind up together. I mean, heck, oh. it's... The, well, I it, feel like, honestly, there are so many alternate Earths that, like, writers can just kind of ship whoever they want now, and it's canon course. It's canon somewhere. Oh, it, it is canon somewhere. But on but in terms of Captain America and Black Widow, I could see them being more of a... Co- because in terms of opposites attract, see, whereas Black Widow is this... Is this uh, behind the behind this visage of, a, of an innocent woman, she's a, a this heartless killing machine and cap has has his morals about him and has all of these and has this moral code that he follows and everything and opposites attract with that Mm -hmm. and that could be and as a matter of fact from what i hear in captain america 3 that's actually going to be a a romance they're actually going to be a romance when of course i've heard and of course you kind of you kind of see her coming around too because she started out being you know pretty much just basically a human robot yeah she Um, she was a loner in uh, when we first met her, yeah, and when Bart, uh, well, her only real investment that she had with the team was Barton, mm-hmm. aka Hawkeye, and when Hawkeye was compromised, when he when he was uh, when he was taken over by Loki with the scepter, you know, you saw a little bit of an emotional growth for her, and she thought, okay, I've let Barton in, uh, why can't I let others? And she, I think she does that. Mm-hmm. She did that in Captain America: Civil War because I think her and Cap. Uh, make probably the be- have probably the best on screen chemistry in terms of teamwork and everything. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I love I love um, I love Falcon, and I'm sure uh, Cap and Bucky will work well together. They mm-hmm. may even do better than Cap and Black Widow, but for me, the best I've seen so far is Cap and Black Widow working together and figuring out what uh, what Shield's dirty little yeah. secret is. Oh yeah, I thought that was really well done. I mean, everybody knows that I absolutely love Winter Soldier. Oh yeah, yeah. dude. I love I love I love Winter Soldier, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do with Civil War because the Russo brothers are back. They got the same writers from Civil War, or from uh, Winter Soldier. I I know, and I know they're going to do great things with it because mm-hmm. the Russo brothers, so far they haven't disappointed. And a lot of people thought you know thought that Winter Soldier was going to be another throwaway movie in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but no, they took it serious and they mm-hmm. actually delivered probably the best Marvel film you know that you know. I, I thought I like actually I like it better than I like Avengers, mm-hmm. and you said it was probably your favorite. I th- yeah, I think right now Winter Soldier is probably my favorite as far as it's just uh, I I just think it's the most grown up, and as far as like yeah. the plot line is the most complex. That I mean, yeah, I get that, and it's it's a strange it's a strange thing to see, uh, it's a strange thing to see um, also. With with the growth in the Marvel movies, you know what new characters are coming out because we haven't seen. Uh, I haven't heard anything about Thor Ragnarok yet. I've heard zero about that. I have, and I've also, and it, it was like the new when the new things were introduced, like Guardians of the Galaxy, for instance. When it was introduced, 
everyone thought it was going to be stupid. Everyone thought it was going to be I, horrible. I was that was a big head scratcher for me. I was like, really? And I didn't really, I wasn't familiar with the characters at all. I knew about Rocket and just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I um, I knew about Star Lord. I knew about I knew about um, I knew about Star Lord. You know, P, uh, Peter Quill. I knew about him, and I knew about Drax the Destroyer. I'd seen a few people dressed up as Drax mm-hmm. at, at like some conventions and everything, um, and I did research on it and everything. But I but overall, the Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't know that they were like a full team. Yeah. Well, the thing I, with that is, I I knew nothing about it, and I was like, this could be terrible. And then as they kept releasing trailers, I got so pumped for that movie. And honestly, like that movie totally lived up to the hype. I think so too. I think in, in a lot of ways it overwhelmed the hype because for me, what t- what truly made the film great in a lot, it was really good by itself. And, uh, but for me, it was the soundtrack. The mm-hmm. soundtrack, Oh yeah. just how self-aware it was that this is a silly movie, but at the same time, we're having fun, man. Yeah. And that's what this is all about. And I... I'm very excited to see what they're going to do with the second one because um, I think I think Guardians of the Galaxy two is going to finally bring more Thanos into the fold. Sure. For uh, for the Avengers uh, Infinity Wars, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I oh gosh, so much swirling for Infinity Wars. I mean, could you imagine the Guardians of the Galaxies and uh, the Avengers all in one thing? It's going to be crazy. Maybe, maybe how they'll do it is they'll have the first half be the Avengers side of trying to beat Thanos, and then uh, they'll have the second one, uh, have the Guardians of the Galaxy, and then eventually at the end, they'll converge on this one point where they have to pretty much just go after Thanos yeah. altogether. And the end of the second movie will be the big battle there. I mean, it, there's really any way they can go about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see what they're going to do. It, I, yeah, <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Um, but I guess they're committed now, so... Oh, yeah. and <laughs> it, it will be something to see. I was going to say, do you think Cap or Iron Man is going to die at the end of Civil oh, War? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I feel like they're going to go with... Uh, I feel like they're going to go with Cap. You think Cap's going to die? Well, I mean, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, the, the comics... Um, well, they, they made a point that they... That it's based in some part on it, mm-hmm. but it's not <clears throat> a carbon copy retelling. Sure. In which, if it was, you know, everyone would know what to expect. Cap dies. Mm-hmm. Spoilers if you haven't read the Civil War, uh, Civil War uh, series yet. But <clears throat> I think my bet, my bet is probably Tony Stark. I think that he's going to die, and he's going to be a catalyst for something for something truly sinister hmm. that's going to that's going to eke its way in. And I don't know. I don't know. They, they could go any way about it. But from what they're teasing, someone is going to die. And if it's not one of the two mains, uh, two main Avengers, you know, Cap and mm-hmm. Iron Man, I believe it'll be, I believe, um, I hope Hawkeye doesn't because from what we were introduced to his family in, uh, in yeah, Age of Ultron, I was like, oh. I, I don't think it, I don't think it'd be Hawkeye. I mean, you know, Bucky could be Bucky. I don't uh, think it'd be Falcon. No, Falcon. I, I think Falcon signed on for at least three or four more films. Um, and I, I think Bucky would have the emotional weight because they would he fights so hard to finally get his friend back. You know, after he thought he was dead and then turned and then and now he's back on now his he's side. Back and then finally lose him after all of that. Oh man. Or it could be maybe maybe Bucky is killed and that's what pushes Cap over the edge and then he. In you know, in a fit of rage, he g- goes too far and, and kills kills Tony. I don't know. I don't know. It, it there's so many ways they can go with this, and I'm so. excited to see what they're gonna do. And also, I think you've noticed this. This is a noticeably short cinema video mm-hmm. because now most of their videos are ten minutes or more. Right. And this is this just goes to show you this is one of their earliest ones. I think this is like their second one. Sure. The first one they did was uh, the Amazing Spider-Man, which uh, uh, Tom Holland is the new Spider-Man. I, I don't know. Oh what, yeah, he's supposed to be in. Yeah, well, that's that's one thing about it. I heard someone watched like an early draft of the mm-hmm. of the movie. They like watched an early cut, and uh, he said Tom Holland is awesome as Spider Man. And I'm like, okay, so I mean, he's in it. So he's I, it's a definite. I thought I thought Andrew Garfield did a great job too. I mean, I, I think so too, and I think he was probably one of the brightest spots of the film. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just there's so much about the film that. I think there's just so much about the film that's just distracting yeah. that, that truly made the film not live up to it. What they did wrong in the first one, uh, the first one was a, they had to pretty much do the origin story again. There sure. was no getting around that. Mm-hmm. What the, what went wrong in the second one is they tried to do too much. When you introduce not one, not two, but three villains, 
and including two huge primary villains, Electro and uh, and and Green Goblin. Mm-hmm. I think this one should have been the reintroduction of Harry and the yeah. death of Norman Osborn and, and also the the showing of the green, you know, I, potential Green Goblin. You know, that one thing they did really well was they, they reintroduced Harry Osborn, and it's like they're, they're supposed to have backstory. Like, yeah. And then, like, when they met back up and they hadn't seen each other since they were kids, they did a really good job with that. Like, no, I felt that, too. I really felt like these two had a connection. Yeah, I did, I did too. And in a lot of films, they rush it in some ways, but... It, mm-hmm. But in truth, they they would act. They acted how you would expect. Mm-hmm. You know, cautious of each other. You know, has he changed? What's different? And uh, and eventually, they're just like, hey, we're the same guys that we were back then. Yeah. We're just we're just a little bit older. And then that that movie killed me because if you look at like the computer screen, uh, there's totally a thing that says the Venom Project. Yeah, and, and it's just that's the <laughs> one thing of what it is like. No, if, I know it, it. It was the building of the Sinister yeah. Six. And they're still talking about doing a Sinister Six movie, but I think it's been canned now because yeah. of the whole deal with sure. Marvel now, deal with Marvel Disney. But it's just um, like because Venom is like that cult, like favorite Marvel villain, sometimes antihero, and it's like they got you know the skinny guy from that '70s show to play Venom. Well, it, <laughs> it's like come well, on, Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock is a, in in the comics is an intimidating person. Yeah. he's a, he's. He's not a sniveling kind of kind of person mm-hmm. like Topher Grace portrayed him. Yeah, as. The, uh, they if wrote, Topher would have put on some weight and and would have, I mean, would have been more intimidating. He did. I mean, he did work out quite a bit for the role. But they they wrote him as a very petty character. And the thing is, is like the whole point is like the symbiote takes over. There's none of this like pull the mask back. It's like okay, I'm gonna talk crap to you, and then you know. Yeah, that that I didn't like either. Because um, that that. You know, Venom has to be in control. Well, if if Amazing Spider-Man Two would have done good, if they truth is, I think they should have focused directly on Electro, mm-hmm. and also the expansion of Peter and Gwen's relationship, mm-hmm. and would have had Harry Osborn maybe have Harry help in some way, have Harry give Peter access to the files and everything, so that he can figure out a way to beat Electro instead. And Electro, and you know, the guy, and you know, he's a smart enough guy by himself. Uh, to figure out, you know, how to get, how to make a suit that would be able to sustain himself, and it will show like, and Spider-Man has to build stuff, and and Electro builds stuff to make himself more volatile and more able to control his power, mm-hmm. and thus the fight, and the, thus the second fight at the end of the film is more taxing on Peter and everything, and for them to do what they did with Gwen Stacy at the end of the second one, I was like, you wasted, you you pretty much wasted the biggest heartbreak in mm-hmm. all of comic book. Pro- it, it's probably the biggest shocking death in comic book history mm-hmm. because it single-handedly ended the Silver Age of comics. Yeah, it it's one of the most shocking moments ever, and it happened while he was trying to save her. Mm-hmm. And same thing happened with this one in Amazing Spider-Man Two. What they could have done is saved it to Amazing Spider-Man Three for the big thing with actually the person who was responsible, the Green Goblin, and build the Goblin up for an entire film. Mm-hmm. I mean, ha- I mean, tease it and do it right. Don't just don't just have him show up, reintroduce himself as a as a character, and and then all of a sudden he's a villain. You know, we don't even have time to to really uh, see his character and and see the redeeming qualities and where he's lacking. And uh, oh gosh, such a <laughs> nightmare! I just it, it was the perfect storm of bad that happened that made Sony lose everything that made people lose faith in their in their telling of the Spider Man franchise. I mean, it was the perfect storm of bad. And don't get me wrong, Mark Webb's a great director, and he's going to go on and do other things, do better things. But uh, just such a train wreck. Yeah. And I, I and I'm so pissed that Andrew Garfield uh, probably is probably my favorite rendition of Spider-Man because he's the more accurate in terms of portraying Spider-Man as Spider-Man, and because uh, you know more playful and everything. You know, actually, you know, not being cheesy like Tobey Maguire was because Tobey Maguire was a little cheesy with mm-hmm. his stuff and a little too clean cut. Yep. Whereas Spider-Man actually in the comics cut corners in a lot of ways. And Andrew Garfield's character did that. Mm-hmm. And I'm gl- and they portrayed that really nice. It's mm-hmm. just, yeah. uh, and uh, I really love Andrew Garfield too. Uh, sure. Jeez, sorry. I went <laughs> off there. <laughs> no, you're fine. I went All off right. and it, it was nasty. They're used to it. They've seen the show. All right, well. Uh. I think we're going to end it there. Um, we appreciate everyone for joining us. Uh, please, you know, jump in the comments. Let us know what else you would like us to watch. Um, and also check the description for our related content. Uh, thank you all once again for joining us. And hopefully we will see you all very soon.
Thank you.